Uh, first of all, you know, I'd like to uh, give my thanks to our fans. Our, our fans are they're the best in the NBA, and they uh, they definitely showed up today. Uh, and you know, obviously, we wish we were still playing, uh, but this is part of part of the sport. Um, we'll be better. Uh, from this experience uh, going forward. Uh, our guys are definitely hurting right now, uh, which obviously they should be. Uh, but I got a lot of gratitude for every man in that locker room, um, not just the players, uh, but the medical performance staff, uh, the coaching staff, uh, and everybody else in the front office. The organization um, was terrific this year. And, um, you know, again, you wish you could have uh, gotten more, uh, especially for the city and for the fans. But uh, nobody in our organization should uh, be dropping their heads right now. Um, the reality of it is they, 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 they showed their experience. Uh, they absolutely kicked our behind um, on the glass. I mean, Lo Kevon Loney was unbelievable. I mean, he was unbelievable uh, to have 10 offensive rebounds. Um, you know, you got to give him credit, even Wiggs. Wiggs with four offensive rebounds. Um, they had 13 offense, and we talked about it, too. We said, hey, the, the third quarter is their quarter. We got to make sure that we buckle down and, and we go get it. And um, they had 13 offensive rebounds in that third quarter alone. And it's going to be hard to win, obviously, if you give up you know, 16, uh, 18 offensive rebounds for 24 second chance points. Uh, and then o o on top of that, um, we, you know, we were 16 for 27 from the free throw line. Um, we didn't, we didn't knock down free throws when we had an opportunity. So when you, when you lose the battle the way we did in, in, in those two areas, uh, it's going to be tough, especially when you have, have a, a guy like Steph Curry on the opponent on, on your, your opponent's team. Uh, Steph was he, he was elite. He did what he was supposed to do. He put these guys on his back and he said, "We're not losing tonight, and I'm gonna make sure that that happens." So you give Steph a, 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 a ton of credit for doing exactly what he was supposed to do. Heck of a performance by him. Second row, Coach Brendan Nunez, uh, Kings Herald. You've been around Steph a lot. Uh, where does this fall into the performances that you've seen from him? And then from your guys' perspective, what do you feel like you could have done better to slow him down? Uh, you know, we, we blitzed him. And when we blitzed him, he got off of it. And they they uh, hit the pocket and hurt us in the pocket. You know, we I mean, I guess we could have double teamed him more and, and, and uh, allowed him to uh, somebody else to, you know, get dunks or whatever like they did early on. But um you know, a guy like that, you just you hope that uh, uh, he misses some shots. I, I still think we could have withstood his, you know, his barrage if we would have made free throws and boxed out. It, you know, you know, he's an elite player. You know, uh, a guy like that is going to try to win the game for him. But you, can, you just can't. You can't have um, you know Loon get ten offensive rebounds and then us miss. Uh, 11 free throws. It's, it's, I mean, if you look at everybody else, again, you can usually withstand one guy having a big game. If you look at everybody else, you know, Clay was four for 19. Wiggs was five for 16. I mean, you know, Jordan Poole was three for nine. You know, I, I mean, they shot 43% from the field. They shot 32% from the three-point line. We just uh, got our behinds kicked on the glass and, and then missed free throws. Mike, James Hammy, ESPN 3rd. 1320. Um, this might not be the experience you guys wanted, but it's probably the experience you you needed. Um, just how excited are you to like take a little bit of break here, but then get right back to the grind with this team and try to build something long term? No, I, it's all. I'm excited about this team. I got a lot of gratitude for everybody in that locker room. You know, I think we obviously have a chance to really, really be good in the future. This obviously stings. It's going to sting for a while. It should. It's supposed to sting. And uh, hopefully, we'll be able to use this and remember what this feels like, so that when we get going this summer, uh, we can crank it up a notch, so we don't feel this sting again next year. Coach Brown. Uh, Tony Harvey, NBC Sports Radio. Uh, of course, you know, there was a lot of talk coming in, you know, about the Warriors 
record in a regular season and then um you know that maybe they don't have the legs but uh it appears that um Steve Kerr you know now that he has a healthy squad he he know how to prepare for these type of games can you comment on him and his preparation and and him going forward you know into the next series with the Lakers uh yeah I mean Steve's he's a hall of fame coach I mean he's got four or five titles as a head coach maybe six I don't even know and he's got a million as a player and so uh, he's the best of the best and you know he did a heck of a job throughout this entire series um, you know I wish them nothing but the best obviously if we if we can't win it we hope that they I, I hope that they win it because of my bond with Steve and, and some of those guys so uh, he's a hell of a coach Mike uh, that first half you guys um you were playing with great pace, um, winning the rebounding battle in the possession game, stuff like that. And I'm wondering, second half, like what, the the offensive rebounding for them was that? Did you guys kind of let them off the hook a little bit? Did that prevent you from continuing to dictate pace as much as? Yeah, hundred percent. You know when. When they offensive rebound the way they did, they had 13 in that third quarter. Uh, not only does it stop us from getting out running, but it also uh, takes the air out of you. It takes the air out of you, and it gets them confidence. And so uh, every offensive rebound that they got, their confidence just kept rising and rising and rising. And, and it started to, um, in my opinion, it started to uh, creep doubt, doubt in what we were trying to do because we couldn't control the boards. Mike, you've talked a lot about things that you can live with, especially like missing good shots and stuff like that over the course of the, uh, the series. I'm curious if losing because of the offensive rebounds or that having a big part, is that something that's going to be on your mind a lot over the summer or can you just put water under the bridge? Yeah, no, no, for for sure. Yeah, I mean, again, we can't give up 18 offensive rebounds. To me, that's something that we can control. Uh, also, you know, shooting 59% from the free throw line in, in a game like this, in my opinion, as good a shooters as we have, that's something we can control. So those two things, at the end of the day, you know, they, 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 it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt. And that's what I'm going to look back more than anything else, uh, wishing and hoping we did a better job in. Because, like I said, if we would have, and my, it's my personal opinion, I, even with Steph having the game he had, I thought we would have been great. Coach Mark Haynes with the SAC Observer. Um, being that you spent so much time with Steve Kerr and the Warriors, um, did you kind of throughout the season use a lot of, you know, memories and moments you have with them to kind of give examples to your current team? Yeah, I mean, they're not just those guys. I mean, I've been with some great coaches from Bernie Bickerstaff to Tim Gergerich, uh, Rick Carlisle, um, Greg Popovich, and – you know, so I, I've been with a, around a lot of great coaches and been in, in a lot of great situations. And so you always try to lean on your experiences that you've been through with other guys and in other situations to help your team grow, especially when we haven't been, been in it together as a unit. So uh, it took a lot from Steve because I was with him these past six years. But there are other guys, too, that I leaned on uh, in my experiences that I leaned on uh, to share with the team. Mike, you may you may have already answered this um, in terms of, you know, the thing that might haunt you most from Game Seven. Is that the biggest takeaway of the of the series as you take into the off season that that's going to just stick with you uh, the most? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, like I said, the, the games that they won big. I mean, Loon was a monster. You know, it was a Game Three. Loon had twenty twenty one. You know, tonight he has twenty one rebounds and. You know, again, those are definitely controllable, in my opinion. Uh, he's a fantastic, fantastic rebounder, but we got to, we need to do a better job with him. Uh, and then, like I said, to, uh, tonight in particular, uh, the, the free throws to shoot 59 percent from the free throw line—that's uh, that, that that that's bothersome or that hurts, however you want to call it, because I know we're a better free throw shooting team than what we displayed tonight. I know you had expectations on what Fox could be on a playoff stage, but you know, through his first playoff series, just what did you see from him? And, and as you look forward with him, uh, I, Fox was great. Uh, you know, he struggled tonight, obviously. You know, but uh, uh, he was fantastic. He never, uh, you know, he always seemed in the moment. Uh, he, he, you can, you know, when you have a guy that has a chance to be special, you can feel it. And uh, and I felt it. 
from him throughout the whole playoff series. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to be working with him going forward because uh, he's going to do a lot for this city, for this organization in terms of helping us uh, try to fight for that championship we're so desperately trying to get. Coach, you talked about fans a little bit, um, but how cool was that to see even when the game seemingly was already decided and the benches were cleared, um, fans stayed and they gave the team a standing ovation through the final buzzer? I'm telling you, man, these are best fans in the NBA. They are absolutely freaking phenomenal. And uh, I wouldn't want to be around any other fans with the way these guys are. You know, we owe them so much gratitude and appreciation that words can't even describe it. And, you know, a lot of times you always say, hey, we're going to do this, you know, for ourselves. It's us in the locker room. But, man, I mean, you, you, when you have fans like this, you want to include them in what you're playing for. You want to do something special for them because they absolutely deserve it with their passion and their energy that they bring, not just to the games, but when walking around town, pre-game, post-game, I, I, I'm, I'm touched by, by our fans. They're, they're, they're fin- freaking phenomenal. Thank you, guys. Uh, I mean, they uh, they came out of the half and they responded like champions. I mean, um, they got to every loose ball, they got every 50-50 ball, they got every uh, they got a lot of offensive rebounds. Um, I mean, they did everything uh, that you need to do to win a game in the third quarter, and uh, I feel like that's that's really where we lost it. Tony Harvey, NBC Sports Radio. Uh, De'Aaron, could you um, speak on uh, Steph and, and what he was doing? And you know, can you just speak on that? Yeah, I mean, he's one of the greatest players ever. Um, I mean, he makes tough shots. He gets in the lane. He's able to finish. Uh, uh, he did everything for them tonight. And uh, I mean, once he got it going, it was it was it was just tough for us to slow him down. Obviously, you want to try to send two at him, just disrupt him as much as possible. But uh, like I said, when he when he gets it going, there's pretty much nothing you can do. Uh, and like I said, just the way that they came out in the second half as a team, you know, if if Steph has it going, and then they're also getting every loose ball, they're also getting offensive rebounds when he does miss. Um, then you know we're not putting ourselves in a, in a position to to win a game. Hi, dear, and. Um... I know it's a little early. Like you haven't had much time to reflect on on what the season has has been. Um, but 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 can you talk about just kind of what the the strides you you guys have made? What that means to you personally and and the the team as a whole? Yeah, I mean this is definitely a building block. Um, obviously, being able to play a team like this, who you know we all have tremendous respect for, um, who've been there, done that. This is definitely just something that you build on. Um, I mean, we had a good season. You know, we were the third seed. We were, stayed relatively healthy. Um, I think playing against this team in the in the first round was a blessing and a curse. You know, you could learn a lot. Um, you know, you're not the favorite to win. You know, we, we fought every game, um, but they did what champions do. And for us, I feel like a lot of the guys, you know, whoever's back next year, obviously we still relati- relatively have a younger to have a younger team. Um, I feel like we learned a lot this series. And uh, like I said, that's why that's why this was a blessing and a curse to play against this team in the first round. But no, I mean, we uh, like I said, we learned a lot and you just try to build off of that. Obviously, this is a lot of our first times in a postseason. Um, you know, you got a taste of it. You got to feel what it was like to play against one, a team who's a championship contender just about year in and year out. Um, and you, you, you take that and you build off of it. Yeah, Mark Haynes, Sack Observer. Um, congratulations, first off. Um, but now that you got your first series out the way and, like you said, playing against Steph and, and those guys, was it everything you imagined? And also, what did you and uh, Steph talk about when y'all embraced each other? Yeah, I would say it was everything I imagined. I mean, shit, we just played them 11 times this season. So four times in the in the regular season and seven times in the postseason. Um, I mean, you, you pretty much – 
saw everything that you could possibly see and adjustments. Obviously, you know what each other's going to do. Um, and then it's just a battle of wills. Uh, and, and I think their will was greater than ours tonight. I mean, Steph had 50. Uh, Loon had, what, 25 rebounds. I think as a team, they had 18 offensive rebounds. Like, it was a battle of wills. At this point, you know what, you know what each other are going to do. So um, who's going to go out there and play harder? Who's going to get to the loose balls? And, and they did that tonight. Um, I mean, he just let me know that, you know, people know who I am now, obviously. Uh, being able to play on this stage and, and perform. Um, obviously, I don't think I played well tonight. Um, I know that there's another level that I have to get to as, as, a, as a professional, um, and then our team has to get to as well. But um, I'm grateful for this experience. And uh, yeah, this, the, the playoffs is everything that I expected it to be. Darren, in your first playoff series, you've shown the world what you've been doing in Sacramento for years. Um, as the world has learned things about you, this season and in this series, is there anything that you've learned about yourself? Um, I don't know if I would say if there's anything I've learned about myself, but just just being resilient, just coming in and um, knowing that I could play on the big stage. Obviously, it's been years since I've been on that stage, but no, nah, I don't think I really learned anything about myself, but um, I feel like I learned lessons about basketball and just what it takes to win at a high level, especially when you see a team over and over again. This is the first time that I've ever had to do that. You know, um, you might see a team four times in a year, but you know it's spaced across. This year we play the Warriors, I think, three times, like the first two weeks. But usually it's spaced across a course of a few months. Um, now we played a team seven times in two weeks. Uh, that was definitely a learning lesson, and uh, I'm, I'm happy that I got to experience that. De'Aaron, James Ham, ESPN 1320. Um, you, you have, we got to see fourth quarter Fox this season. We got to see playoff Fox. It, do you see where you can improve and take it to the next step, step and be become that superstar level player? Yeah, definitely. I mean, just having, you know, a feel for the game in different scenarios. And obviously we talked about it before where I'm like, I can have a bad couple quarters and then just turn it around. Um, in the postseason, you know, you got to be on your P's and Q's all, at, at all times. And, um, Obviously, 82 games is a long season, but um, you try to go out every game. You're trying to fill the game out. Obviously, you want to affect the game in many different ways. Um, but the, uh, the postseason is definitely different. I do think these seven games were a lot different than uh, the f previous four that we played in this season and every other game that we played this season. So um, just, just learning that and actually getting a taste of that, I think, is, uh, was, uh, was the best thing about it. Hey, De'Aaron, just going seven games with the Warriors and getting this close to advancing, in terms of what you learned, did you learn maybe some things as to how close it is to like that thin line between advancing and not advancing that you can take with you going forward? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Mike preached just the little things all season long. Um, and I, I would say that's why we lost. I mean, yeah, Steph had a big game, but we were limiting other players. Uh, but the turnovers and then the 20 offensive rebounds, those things start to pile up. And we can look at this game. Uh, Game three, they did the same thing. Game five, they did the same thing. So the way that we were losing was because of the little things that started to pile up on each other. And I mean, we had problems in the, in the regular season like that, but uh, it was extremely amplified, uh, amplified in the playoffs. When you look at just going into the off season, um, I know after a bad game, you guys try to flush it and move on. As you now head into the off season, though, do you want this sting to kind of linger with you as as you guys move forward and maybe use that as motivation at all? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, we talked about it in the locker room. Like, you want this thing to to last for for a little while. Um, like I said, you you use this as a building block. You know, I'm I'm 25, Demas 26, Kev's 24, Davion's 24, Malik's 25, like Keegan's 22. We have guys who are not even close to their prime. We have guys who are in their first and second years. Um, we have guys who aren't even on their second contracts yet that are playing big minutes. Like we as a team have a ways to go. And you'd rather, yeah, we lost in seven games to defending champs. You'd rather have it that way than not make the playoffs. So like I said, this is, this is something that you want to be able to build off of. And we talked about it before. Um, some teams have had this and then you fall off or some teams have had this and they kept going up. So. Um, you you continue to go into the offseason, you work on what you need to work on, you come back together, and you, you try to be better.
Brendan Nunes, Kings Herald. I'm, I'm sure in your previous years you heard a lot of things about what the postseason is like or isn't like. And now that you've been through it, do you kind of get to play Mythbusters on what is or isn't true? Or is there anything that you realized was true but never heard about? Um, I do think the game was, was a lot more physical than it is in the, in the regular season. Um, you, know, you get away with some things defensively that you, that you wouldn't get, get away with in the regular season. Um, some people are playoff risers. Some people don't perform in the playoffs. Uh, you want to be on, on, the, on the better end of the two. But I think the, the physicality definitely was, was something that was, uh, that was amplified in the playoffs. And you, you embrace that. I feel like us as a team, we were much better defensively in the playoffs than we were in the regular season. Maybe that's because we were following a little bit more and they weren't calling it or whatever it is. But, uh, yeah, it was it, the physicality is the number one thing, I think, um, that's different from the playoffs in the regular season. Tony Arby, NBC Sports Radio. De'Aaron, um, you went through this battle with uh, DeMontis Sabonis, you know, who came in here last year. Uh, and, you know, he talked about physicality. He, he sure experienced that in this series. But what was it like, you know, going through this battle with him and uh, knowing that you guys are looking at forward to having many more wars coming up? Ahead. Yeah, I mean, it was it was great for this to be our first, um, obviously my first in the playoffs ever, um, but his first with me and uh, just this group of guys. Like I said, it's just, this is a learning experience for us, you know, um, being at the age that we are, you have a lot, you know, hopefully you have a lot of basketball left to be played. Um, you know, you're entering your prime. You want to have the best years of, of your basketball career coming up. So, um Losing to this team is, uh, like I said, it's just you, you just learn from it. You, you learn, you take everything um, that they did to us, that they taught us, and uh, you, try to, you try to be better at those things and just continue to, uh, to work at it. I mean, obviously, you want to get back to the playoffs and you want to advance, but, you know, it doesn't work that way. you got to go through a regular season, um, obviously putting your body through it and, uh, getting to the playoffs, wanting to be as healthy as you can possibly be, and uh, just being ready to play. Hey, Darren, Matt, George, you've said, <clears throat> excuse me, you kind of touched on this already a little bit, but the expectations for next year to build upon this year, I I'm not talking about win totals or anything like that, but what are your expectations for yourself and this group and, and what you guys will do and the work that you'll put in for this uh, offseason? Um, you know, I haven't thought about next year yet, but... Uh, I mean, just be better at what we what we know we need to work on. Obviously, um, you know, offense was offense, and we need to be better in the, in the postseason. We didn't shoot the ball um, as well as we would have wanted to. But like I said, that with with that experience and coming into the playoffs and the physicality is going up, maybe that's why we didn't shoot well. Obviously, we had open looks that we just didn't make, but that could be fatigue because you know you haven't played postseason games. So, uh, just being able to get used to that and. Now your body knows what it feels like to go through 82 games. Um, for the physicality to ramp up, playing seven games, and now you have to make a shot. Like it's, it's very different than making a shot in game 50 or game 70 or game 20. Um, it's not the same shot. Every shot that you take in the playoffs is, is being watched. Um, every miss is amplified. So I just think, like I said, just being able to, to, to go through this experience, I think, just teaches everybody what it's like to for every shot to be a big shot.